Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I am Rapid and this is going to be Carnage Esports going up against Kick Esports in the grand finals of the Absolute Amateur League on the 20th of June. And uh, this is the grand finals, like I said, they have both, both teams have passed teams like uh, TT Esports, um, uh, Evo Reality Online, um, uh, what's another good team that they also passed? New Era Esports was also involved in this, so even though the name of the tournament is the Amateur, Absolute Amateur League, uh, no amateurs by any means on either side. Sure, there are going to be a couple of newer teams, but neither one of these teams fit into that category because both Carnage and Kick Esports are some of the best uh, esports offerings that a lot of Europe has to offer. I mean, obviously you have like the Moscow Fives, you have the CLGEUs, but for the next tier of uh, esports opportunities and organizations, these are definitely going to be some of the best choices that you have right now. So uh, Kick is actually a little bit more spread out, you know, sure they're grouped up protecting uh, the invade on the red, but uh, with a sapling right here that uh, Thormax going to go ahead and pop, and uh, another ward placed over here by uh, by Carnage. Carnage really knows a lot of what they're, they're actually looking to take. Now, uh, you can see Mitch is going to make his way around the ledge here for Carnage. He's going to make sure that uh, nobody tries to stop Ma Maokai from throwing his saplings down there at the Wraith camp. Now, he's not actually opting to do that. I really think that that could be a really interesting option because a lot of Maokais you'll see just take down the Wraith camp instantly and then walk over to Blue Buff. That does make you about six to seven seconds late. Uh, I think that was the timer Odd One said, but... Uh, it does make you a little bit late, so starting at Wolves is a little bit safer, a little bit faster, but that does mean it takes you longer to get your next levels, making it over to the other side. Plus, it doesn't insta-jib the camp like it does for- Oh, no! DX, which is actually DX Alchemist, uh, snagged the, uh, the big wolf, which is going to not give Maokai level 2 off of the blue buff, I believe. I believe, if, yeah, if you take the big wolf, you don't get level 2 off of the, uh, off of the blue buff. So, uh, same thing here for- Thormac. I've actually haven't seen a jungle ball of bear in quite a while. His ganks are really good. You run up, flip him over the shoulder, that puts him in a really bad situation. But is that really what you want to be doing? Uh, already, let's go over the mid matchup. It's going to be Carnage, DX Alchemist versus War A. And uh, Kick Esports, one of the things that they specialize in, well, I wouldn't say specialize, but one of the things that they do have a very good lineup in is the, uh, the mid and jungler presence. So we're going to try to focus on that this time and uh, make sure that you guys can check out some awesome plays. Wow, that was just a solid quarter of Buxom's health just taken off there by the uh, the bubble on Rizel. So bottom lane is gonna be uh, Mazum and Rizel versus Bustum and Carnage Cat, AKA Miss Rescue, who's apparently gonna need to be doing some rescue here on Buxom, already forced to just pop a potion even after just a couple of applications of uh, Phosphorus Bomb there from Corky. So a uh, Rizel and Mazum, definitely an experienced bottom lane, but are they experienced enough to handle Carnage Esports? There is the jump in on Rizel. As soon as Leona hit level two, Buxom's actually gonna get knocked up. Dropping down could actually get ignited here, but he's gonna need to take about 100 more damage before that would kill him. So he's actually plan him really dangerously he knows he can dash in for the buckshot at level three actually at level three he's gonna get the smoke screen so that could be their opportunity to go in uh failed gang top by a uh, zoarmi uh, altorius gets out alive actually let's take a little bit of a closer look at exactly how that happens so there's the flash so we're gonna need to rewind it just a little bit more there he is flashing out again, and this time I know. So here comes in Maokai. Is he actually going to flash onto Altorius? No, he's just going to get the Twisted Advance. Drags him all the way in to the tower, and uh, there he's going to just get out of the way. The Ignite goes down, so Ignite burn top lane. Going to go back down to bottom lane. We're going to see the same little bit of action that we saw earlier. Ward in the bottom bush here for Milesum, so he actually did not ward early. Like, uh, actually, yeah, he did. So there's double wards there. A little bit of an early-ish uh, sapling thrown down there as Maokai makes his way out of there. Last for 35 seconds but was popped there by bullet bear looking to come up there and maybe do the same thing but bottom lane Rizel full health bucks him not really he's gonna be dropping the gatling gun but or not the yeah there he goes in he did not pop the gatling gun he popped the stun but uh was that enough? No, it was not. Uh, Carnage Buxom is going to get out of there. No potions left. We'll just have to go back. That's a really big victory. Is you forced them out of lane early. And that means that you get another wave. You get the opportunity to be the first member of bottom lane to push the wave into their turret, forcing them to lose experience. And that's why Buxom's not going back. He is in the danger zone for sure. Actually, oh, Thormac revealing himself out of the brush. I'm not sure if... Uh, Mr. Army saw that, but uh, he's waiting here for a gank in here on to DX Alchemist. Now he's going to go up to last hit, and these last three creeps could be 
Warre's opportunity to strike. Now, I think that what might have happened is, yeah, Zarmi might have seen Thormac in here. He's going to get the Twisted Advance off, gets thrown behind instantly, slowed, but Thormac's actually in the advantage here because uh, Zarmi's going to be able to get the heal off for Magical Sap if he auto attacks after one more spell. So that was definitely a good good play there by Thormac to get out of there alive. Now, top lane, a lot of aggression after an early flash and an early back from Altorius. I really think that Mitch is going to have a fairly good uh, laning presence top lane. Now, there is no AP currently built on Malphite. He's going 21 defense, uh, possibly with the rest in offense, but uh, the three points in the AD instead of uh, AP scaling. So, I don't know about that. Uh, it could have just gone 0-21-9, uh, which would have been definitely an option. He's looking to go the armor build for Malphite, which I'm not sure is the strongest build for top lane. I definitely think that uh, if you're top laning, you can go with more of an AP Malphite build. You go for like a Sunfire Cape into uh, Abyssal Scepter. So strong because the Abyssal Scepter amplifies the damage from Sunfire Cape. Really good top lane build. And I've actually seen that coming out of a lot of uh, NA versions of European teams. Like uh, I think Curse NA used to do that and uh, definitely saw MT WNA uh, run that a few times. In fact, Mandatory Cloud, uh, their mid laner, is just so known for his mid AP Malphite. And then top lane, uh, their top laner Balls actually runs a really good AP hybrid armor Malphite that's a uh, really interesting build. So it'll be interesting to see what Altorius goes for this time around. Probably just gonna go for the gold per five build, turn that into a Randuins and get his armor that way. Regardless of that, Zarmi is over here. He just took down double golems. The problem with double golems is that uh, they take a lot of resources, a lot of health, a lot of mana to uh, go ahead and take out. And with no buffs on Maokai, right now he's gonna have to go back and uh, pick up his philo stone so yeah there's they're gonna be that does he have anything else no he's just gonna pick up some wards meanwhile mid lane haven't really been focusing on here but that's just because there's not a lot happening this is post Ari uh, nerf patch so she doesn't get as much um, uh, damage off of her spells she has to build more AP but consequentially consequently consequentially that means like one right after another because that's sequentially I don't know grammar lessons for noobs here guys uh, that is going to make her AP ratio stronger, so if she does get late game, she is a stronger carry. But uh, just really nurse that early uh, to mid game phase where she just did a lot of damage for no good reason. So uh, top lane, nothing happening. Middle lane, nothing happening. Thormax just in the jungle. Same thing for Maokai. It looks like Zarmi could actually be rolling around bottom lane for another gank. The lane is pushed, so he's going to be able to brush gank if he so desires. Not actually looking to make him play bottom lane, so that's just going to reset a little bit. If we take a look at the CS after an early back there by Buxom, it's going to be 48 to 45. Still really even, and there's not really a CS differential like with creeps left in lane. But here comes the next gank of the game. Top lane, a lot of aggression, but not a lot of results there. Zarmi just waiting. He's going to throw us sapling up there and try to go for these wraith camps no he's just gonna loop around now uh Ware is six he's gonna be able to ult backwards but he is so dangerous right now here comes carnage there is the root oh no he doesn't wait for oh the never move almost could have secured the kill and he actually could pick it up yes the ignite is good for first blood DX Alchemist taking down Ari, their mid lane war a, a little bit underestimate. And if he had hit that uh, the never move, he might not have even had to use Ignite. The Ignite comboed with uh, the Torment actually does additional um, damage, which I believe is actually a bug uh, as far as Riot's concerned, but definitely something I thought would work that way. It's like, hey, it's a dot. It's going to work that way. Uh, Carnage Cat jumping in on Rizel with absolutely no HP, knowing that if he turned around to fight, then Buxom would have been able to pick up the kill. And, uh, you know, trading a support for an AD carry, always a good trade to make. Now, Mossum's out of mana. You see a lot of Janas actually go mana potion instead of a health potion when they go back. She hasn't even actually been able to pick up a Philosopher's Stone, so that's a really big play that she is lacking. You already see Carnage Cat coming out with her own Philosopher's Stone and two wards, but uh, when Janna goes back, she's actually going to pick up a little bit more if we go ahead and check out exactly what the gold is. Uh, 400 gold, so she will be able to grab three wards if she wants when she goes back. Blue buff is going to go over to DX Alchemist, um, whereas the counter blue buff going over to Ari. So both blue buffs really accurately timed, except that she's not willing to lose this... Uh, experience the turret she's actually doing a really good job she's gonna push the push the wave into the turret and force Wayne to leave lose some CS so he's gonna walk back in there turn on his epically white bird for him that is probably the next best Swain uh, they have sense to come out with tyrant Swain so if you aren't playing that then you're just kind of bad which is unfortunate because we like people to be good Ward going down over here by DX Alchemist. Army's going to come up here, and Ari knows something's happening down here. He's uh, saw Carnage walk bottom lane, knows he stayed down there for, from getting the blue buff. Now that they both have blue buff, you can see uh, Ware is just going to try to pull the blue wraith around, but that actually puts him in range of Zwarmi, who could go over there and grab that a little bit of passive aggressiveness. They're just kind of like, you know, trading for no good reason. And you can see Zwarmi walked up there. He wanted to get that. Let me uh, turn off... Uh, 
the Fog of War. Yeah, Blu-ray is still there. Middle lane, there's going to be a lot of harassment. There is the flash, the snare under turret, counter snare by DX Alchemist, but he does not want to overcommit there. And actually, the rest of Arya's ult being used there. Top lane, a little bit more aggression, but bottom lane is where the real story is at. Rizel could drop. No! Lives with 4 HP. Oh my goodness, That's uh, if you guys ever played the Pokemon trading card game competitively, you know if you miscalculate that, uh, the 10 damage at the last second, you just cannot recover from that. And that was a really big play that Graves just failed to make. Sure, you pushed Corky out of lane, but you burned all, a lot of resources to do that. And uh, is that something that was worth it? And I'm thinking the answer is yes. Uh, meanwhile, a gank coming up against Mitch. He's going to try to gank uh, or jump out of there, but one more attack. There we go, Thormac taken and down Mitch. So it's 1-1 one one so far, there's 1,000 gold advantage for Carnage, but it's still anybody's game, only 10 minutes have elapsed, and uh, so right now what Swain's going to be looking to do, both mid and bottom, both the carry lanes are really, really solid right now. They've uh, got a lot of CS, they've got a lot of pushing power, uh, but now Thorvax likes to come in here on Carnage, he's going to drop it backwards into the, the uh, taunt there from Ari, but will Carnage go down, I, or DX Alchemist, he's going to be able to get it out of there. Wow, the bird for him is just too good. The sustain from that man just uh, allowed him to live. He uh, got about 150, 200 uh, health off of that. Now you can see Buxton getting pushed backwards. The snipe is not good. If he, oh my goodness, if uh, Buxton had known his health threshold and the damage that Corky would have put out, what they could have done is let the big one or the uh, the missile barrage hit Buxton. And then Carnage Cat could have stunned Corky under turret, and then maybe Buxom could have dashed back in during the duration of that stun and gotten off a buckshot for the kill. Would have had to happen perfectly, and you would have definitely had to been a couple of steps ahead of the game. Not that they are not, but uh, just a little bit of a play that did not happen, which is actually okay, because sometimes making plays is not the best uh, thing that you can do for your team. Sometimes it's just best to uh, know that, hey, I have a better late game, so why don't I just push it there, do the best that I can with what I have, and uh, actually, wow, there's uh, Thormat getting damaged there, but we'll raise all already back up again already about up again. Carnage is going to get the kill off, but will he be able to turn this around? He's almost out of mana, but Wure just barely out of range. He knows he cannot go down there. He's been scattered out by Ward, so Wure knows this. He's going to just flash over the wall, and oh my goodness, the Jukes! DX Alchemist going to make it out of line. No! There's going to be the Valkyrie in there, the auto attack, and the Janet. Oh no! Just barely in range. Rizal taking... Wow, taking down DX Alchemist. So that's going to be two for two and still the uh, same amount of uh, gold lead. Where a uh, sees Mitch in there. Is Mitch going to get the Blue Wraith? No, he's not. I'm not sure why uh, Carnage doesn't want to just grab that Blue Wraith out. I think that that would definitely be a good trade when you come all the way down from top lane. You can see Malphite doing a really good job of pushing and pushing and never stopping. You can see he's going for uh, the MR build. I say MR build, but it's essentially the AP build later on. I'm not sure what he's going to get. Probably either like Rylai's with the Amp Tome. I uh, could be looking for Sheen. I'm not sure about all that nonsense, but uh, Amp Tome nonetheless. I haven't seen too many Amp Tome builds. He could be just looking for that third gold per five from the Kage's lucky pick. Yeah, that's probably the most likely option, just going triple gold per fives on Malphite. And in fact, you can see there in the bottom part of your screen that he did, in fact, pick up the third gold per five item. So he's like, hey man, I can I can live in lane. Like, there's no way you're gonna be able to kill me because I have so much armor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, you can't kill me and I'm not really gonna make the commitment to kill you. I'm just gonna say, hey, I have triple gold per fives. No matter what you do, I'm gonna have a late game. And I think that's actually a smart decision here for Kick Esports. Uh, I've been talking about Carnage a lot because I'm a little bit of a fanboy, but uh, uh, Kick by no means less uh, worthy of your praise. I think that uh, what they're trying to do here is a really good strategy. You can see actually no gold per fives on Ari. She went Negatron Cloak just to try to sustain against the early advantage that uh, Swain has going for an early Rod of Ages. But uh, you see double gold per fives on Junglers actually. Uh, a really common build, first popularized, I believe, by Saint Vicious. He did it in one of the last MLGs, uh, not the most recent one, but the last series that had uh, League of Legends. Uh, it was just really, really effective. You don't have to get ganks off. If you do, it's just bonus. Zarmi kind of hanging out here, and uh, Zob and uh, Rizel kind of know something's up. They know that. Uh, they don't want to overextend too much. This is the period of the game where the plays are going to be available. It's when you're pushed in lane, you never want to go without your buddies. So uh, you can see it, Rizel accompanying Malzum off there. Dropping a ward in the close safe spot because they know Malkai has the oracles. He just cleared out a ward there for a kick. Making a really good choice of warding in bad places for Malkai to go. If he goes inside the dragon pit, it's easily ganked from mid. If he goes down here, then you can jump on him from bottom lane. Not that that's always the best opportunity. So Carnage Cat and uh, Buxom. I actually just should probably call her Cat or Miss Rescue. But Carnage Cat just sounds so much more epic. Speaking of things that are epic, uh, Altorius' build. If we check out the gold for top lane, 
Uh, it's 4,400 to uh, Lee Sin's 36. So you can see that even though their farm is comparable, it's 107 to 117. Uh, actually, a lot of damage going down top lane. Uh, Mitch could actually go down here. He's doing a lot of damage. There is the proc, but the bite comes out from Thormag. And actually, mid lane Waray will get out of their lives. So that is a one kill advantage now for Kick Esports. They're starting to bring it back. And top lane, you even see if you can get kills. Oh my goodness, Zarmi. Zarmi's in the perfect position, but a complete whiff by everything on Cat. Ugh crushing if that had hit absolutely anyone they would have gotten dropped because you get all three from buckshot and now that's uh dx is down here dx alchemist rather this is going to be the first dragon of the game one of the first major plays we've seen on a neutral creep now uh you're going to see uh malzum try to take out this ward over here we'll get that but will uh thormac be able to jump in there this is not something that uh, Kick really needs to contest. They're going to be able to stack that. So Carnage gets that. They're going to immediately jump over. The oh my goodness. Completely crushing army. Thormac going down as well. Carnage just absolutely making a name for themselves. They are crushing through the Kick lineup. They're going to be able to catch Malzum with a Zenith Blade if they're in range. But no, they're like, hey man. We made a play, we got two kills and a dragon that's going to be tons of gold for us, and already you can see that they're only 1,000 gold in the lead, and that's just because of this build choice here for uh, for Kick. They have one, two, three, four, five, six gold for five items, and you can see on the other hand, only three for Carnage Esports, so they're making plays and they're doing everything right. But you just can't deny those gold per fives. Malphite getting kills under gold per five. That shouldn't technically be possible. And already you can see him going uh, for that Sunfire Cape. And he might even go for Abyssal afterwards just because of how strong uh, DX Alchemist is right now. This kid is doing a little bit of work. He's four and one with uh, almost 6,000 gold. But you can already see that Malphite is still just passing the 5,000. So much farther ahead of absolutely everyone else. Even though he has no kills. So that just goes to show, guys. If you can build gold per fives early like Malphite did, he got all three gold per fives before I think before 14 minutes and that was absolutely ridiculously fast ideally you get one every um, five minutes so if you're beating that uh, that's if you're super good he not only farmed enough gold for that he got assists and he picked up the gold for fives in a timely manner this kid's gonna be doing work later on so uh, definitely something to pay attention not really right now just because Lee Sin has enough spell vamp but oh my goodness he actually throws the ward down right on top of Thormac uh, Altorius does have his ult available there is the running in he's actually gonna take the turret the kick is gonna push them back and a clutch kick from Mitch will actually save him in that circumstance. So, uh, ugh, Malzum actually scouting out DX Alchemist's positioning there. Uh, knows that uh, he's in the area where a signal to, uh, you know, play a little bit more carefully. And now everybody's just going to go back to their lanes. Going to kind of chill out, except for top lane. Zwarmi says, uh, or it's actually uh, ZH Harmony. I've been calling him Zwarmi this whole game. Ah, I like that better anyways. So ZH Harmony uh, running up there. Going to get the CC out on Altori. As you can see, he's spacing out his CC. He wants to allow for maximum cooldowns. He actually gets a little bit of additional damage off of popping his ult. He's going to jump in there. Is the damage enough? ZH Harmony tanking it, but is Altori going to be able to catch this out? I don't think so. The Ignite goes off on a minion. Oh my goodness, that was so huge. Altorius could have picked that up, but actually Carnage has two players down here. DX just going to take this turn. He's like, sup, son. I have AoE damage. I'm going to be able to take that down. The shield goes off as well. And DX, Al G DX Alchemist is going to be able to get out of there alive. Bottom lane, a lot of action. Oh, Rizal getting stunned there, but Buxom could still go down. Is the Valkyrie still used? No, was used to jump into that situation. Carnage Cat wants to play a little bit aggressively. Really can't afford to do this right now. You can see the true damage coming off of Corky's 176 AD, just penetrating the uh, devastatingly strong shields of the 76 armor that Carnage Cat does have. That's one of the benefits you get from uh, going Leona bottom lane. It has heavy, heavy armor, so you're going to be able to make really good trays and her CCs, plus the additional damage allow you to make really strong plays as well. Throw Mac rolling top lane. He's going to be able to fear the minions. Get most of the CS. He's, uh, is he going to grab that? Yeah. No, he does not miss the... Uh, he, he does miss, does not grab... Oh, my goodness. Can a minion die to turret? There we go. Yeah, keep it simple, yo. All right, so here we go. Uh, Thormac is running around the jungle. I'm just kind of gonna take a step back and let you guys know about the situation that we find ourselves in in this game it's three to five but there's only 1,000 gold advantage so like I said earlier on gold for five is definitely carrying kick esports right now and this is really one of the most safe ways you, you can play now we ideally should have gone for gold for fives but had to play a really defensive build going double Dorans into abyssal scepter just because of the that, that just shows you carnage uh 
Carnage's skill, both uh, on DX Alchemist and then also on ZH Harmony doing the gankings, which uh, was ex extremely effective. You saw Ari die a couple times to that, and uh, just really big plays, and ooh, an excellent taunt there. Charm, I guess you would call it, on uh, DX Harmony. So, you know, by no means is Ray being outskilled here. He's just, like, the team coordination, that synergy that uh, Carnage is coming out for is just really kind of making him pay. And I really think, uh, I really believe that if they hadn't made those plays earlier on, he would have gone gold per fives as well. And that could put, uh, put them up at like eight gold per five, something ridiculously strong like that. I know there's actually a really uh, popular, ooh, a miss on the ult there from Buxom. Uh, ZH Harmony is gonna be able to get in there. Mazum dangerously low right now. Buxom flashing past the turret, gets exhausted. Rizel gonna go down regardless. And actually, Buxom, if his quick draw comes off of cooldown, oh my goodness, it was just coming off, uh, that was actually Buckshot. So I think that Mazum was pretty safe during that exchange, but oh my goodness, the X Alchemist getting jumped on. Thormac is coming, he's gonna flash over the wall. Uh, we're gonna jump over there as well as Thormac flashing over the wall as a team. Kick Esports taking down DX Alchemist. Man, that's uh, those plays. He's like, hey, there's a wall there. And uh, even though that notwithstanding, they're just like, uh, I got this thing called a flash. It's, it's pretty good. I think you may have heard of it. And uh, he definitely knows about it now if he didn't uh, previously. 27 thousand gold to 28 even though they're behind a kill and uh, now even on turrets the game's still devastatingly close they don't have the kills and that's just really the the, the, the okay voice words i can do this uh that's the deceptive thing about some malphite uh top lane he has no kills so you're like okay well the top laner on um Carnage has a kill. He does have two deaths, but he's actually doing pretty well in gold. And then you take a look at the gold count here. 7,100 gold. That is, uh, so this guy has four kills. 170 farm, and it's 7.1. And this guy's already on his level just because of the triple gold for five. So even though there are zeros in Malphite's, uh, kill category, the guy's still doing work in the gold department. Well, speaking of uh, the gold department, Carnage is going to make a play for their second dragon of the game. This one much better contested here, but so much AoE. That ward in the bush for Carnage paying dividends. A uh, Bolivar gets instant jibbed. Uh, Thorback will go down there, and uh, Carnage's uh, DX Alchemist getting out of there alive. Will he make it out? Oh my goodness, no, he goes down. Carnage Cat is in the danger zone, but with four people alive, no matter how much armor Malphite has, that is not going to be enough to survive. Carnage making that play. That ward right there. Oh my goodness, so clutch. You saw Leona drop the ult right in there. Malphite uh, did not stand a chance. Uh, you, you saw Thormat go in there, go down instantaneously, along with uh, Wure. Man, that was just a clutch play there. No hesitation. Carnage Cat making the plays and bringing her team back into a solid lead, whereas it was just 1,000 gold. It's now extended to three, and Carnage looking to be in a really good position coming here into the mid late game. I guess you'd call it the early late game, late mid game, whatever you want to categorize it as. But uh, regardless of uh, exactly the, the situation they find themselves in, it's pretty good. And so they're going to be able to go back. And what items are going to be the pickups here? You see Swain going back already has Zonya's Rod of Ages, whereas the Abyssal Scepter on Moray going to be really good. But what else is she picking up? Mercury Treads. So she's going to get the magic penetration from the uh, Abyssal Scepter. It's actually magic resistance reduction, which is way stronger because it can reduce uh, MR below... Uh, zero if you go for heavy magic penetration, so that's pretty cool You guys should check that out sometime. I think there was a there was a double force of nature Malphite I played against once and I just went uh, abyssal uh, haunting guys and um, Void staff that's just like hey, what if you just had half of one of those? It's, it's pretty cool and all of a sudden you realize you're wasting like uh, 3.5 thousand gold. That's eh, not necessarily the greatest option. So Oh, excuse me, I had to take a brief respite for a drink of water. Uh, turret actually being left there, Thormac and Rizel do way too much CC and damage uh, for Buxom to be able to, up, to upstand, withstand, up and with similar, uh, what do you call those, articles? Jaren's? Nah, I got nothing. Alright, so uh, Zormi's, or ZH Harmony, gosh, I'm gonna get trolled so hard for that. Alright, ZH Harmony uh, coming up here holding the lane while Lee Sin goes back. What is Lee Sin actually gonna pick up? He already has the, uh, the hex trigger but ages maybe not the greatest choice it's it's okay because you're gonna be able to do the supportings and you don't have to jump into the middle of the team fight really common to see that on uh, junglers like nocturne just because you have to put yourself in harm's way i've seen dps nocturnes and they're just like hey i can jump in and do crazy insane ridiculous damage for about 0.5 seconds until i get instant jib so uh just going for the tanky top lanes and uh, i think that's you know fairly standard what you need to have are 
People to stand in front of your AD carries. Thormax is going to get the toss backwards on ZH Harmony. The all comes in from all Thorias. Is it going to be enough? And the answer is no, because Mitch says, uh, I have a scumbag shield. I'm going to be doing a lot of work. And ooh, he goes in onto Thormax, sees Mawzum, and that is just how scary Janna can be. It's like, uh, you don't really want to go in on this. So doesn't backs off and uh just really good jump you can already see that even though there's a four kill deficit and uh carnage has two dragons in a row things are ridiculously close wow carnage got getting shrunk from around baron and i think that one of the uh the wisps actually the, from the foxfire hit baron buff and then was like oh hey we don't want to be friends word over the wall a dx alchemist passing over that i've actually had the oracles it was zh harmony so he went back to base picks up a negatron cloak so this guy's rocking 142 over 117 tons of defensive stats just has the the big defensive items there going to be turned into even more defensive ones he's going to be going randuin's most uh, definitely just wants to get in there and that's the take the thing about maokai because uh his sap magic works so well in team fights. Every single auto attack, basically, you're getting back ridiculous amounts of health. He has sustain on top of the tankiness. He just basically never dies. And if you can keep up his ult, that's basically a member of the enemy team that just doesn't do damage. It's 20%. That's one fifth of the enemy team's damage that just isn't there. And you, you guys may think, okay, 20% big but not really that significant oh man you feel it when you fight inside that mal malachi ult malphite ult yeah fighting inside of a malphite ult also slightly dif difficult and not necessarily the best option you can see oh no he, he took two turret shots and it barely broke his shield so this guy's extremely tanky almost 3,000 health tons of armor 208 that's going to be 68 percent uh attack damage reduction if i'm correct on my percentages there Rolling down to mid lane, you can barely even see the bars in his health bar. It's just like, hey, I, I don't die. Which is a really good thing to have a character do. Or not do, as the case may be. So, uh, back to the matter at hand, taking a little bit of a zoom out to the macro perspective. Uh, both teams try to do the pushings. They want to make a play so that then they can go back, either take down an inhibitor or Baron off of that. Maybe even both. If you can get both, it's probably GG. But... Carnage is doing a really good job of stopping these pushes. You just see the AoE. Uh, they don't have a lot of AoE. Definitely a little bit of stronger AoE team coming out from Kick Esports. And, uh, you know, between Ari's line nuke and then Rizel's AoE damage from uh, rockets and phosphorus bombs. Not to mention Gatling Gun, although you really don't want to get close enough to do that. So Kick's actually... Oh, they found the ward that killed them last time. Good job, Kick. Good job. So they're actually looking to make a, a catch here. They have a really catch-heavy team. Every single member of the enemy uh, of uh, Kick Esports has a means of catching somebody. Yeah, the Seismic Shard, uh, yeah, the, the toss back. Wure has the Charm. Yeah, the Slow and CC from Janna. Corky just has a way to catch up to people. So if the rest of his team catches somebody, he's going to be able to make a play off of that. But after uh, trying to catch somebody, uh, Altoria is walking in there saying, oh wait, there's an enemy team here. So we're going to back out, just going to rotate around. And so this is bad for Carnage because they're like, hey, we're kind of sitting here and you know we have an advantage. That's, that's good. We, we want to have an advantage. But they don't realize that they're going up against 1-2. There's the initiate onto Altoria. He actually takes a lot of damage. Does not have that. Oh my goodness, a whiff on Cat's ult uh, will allow Ray to survive. Carnage is DX Alchemist popping his audience at the last possible second. Healing up off of that, but is ignited. He will actually live. He's sustaining in the back. Dodges the Janna Tornado. Oh my goodness, a clutch play there. Just sustaining and living through that. That Zog is so strong there. Allowing the person they focused, they blew all their cooldowns for him. Did not manage to get him, and that just really cost them three members of their team for none. And that's going to be the play that Carnage needs to secure this game. They're going to go all the way up into Baron. They're going to be able to snag this, and there's nothing that Kick Esports can do about this. So... Oh my goodness, guys. This is uh, shaping up to be a little, little bit of a good game, you know? I like it when we see these kind of things. Uh, DX actually healing off of uh, Baron, so definitely an alchemist in that respective. Respective, perspective, respect. All those words. All that and many more coming up in your 9 o'clock. All right, so back to the matter at hand. They made the play that they needed to do. So Carnage is able to uh, d dominatively... Gosh, words uh, not not really coming uh, here, guys. I apologize for, for that, but I do not apologize for either one of these teams playing absolutely ridiculously because that's the deceptive thing about this team. They have let's count these gold per fives: one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven gold per fives 
on Kick Esports. So like, you know what? We we have we have a few uh, few golds. We have the, the the doubloons in our in our bank account. They are uh, they are there. They are massive. And if you check out the gold count, oh no, there's a six thousand gold lead. But they have uh, they're gonna get this dragon without uh, Carnage uh, contesting it. And this is, oh my goodness, this could be horrible for Kick. They need this game to last as long as humanly possible so that their gold provides make up for the CS and tower differential. But uh, also that, you know, one little Baron thing. They actually made the uh, kind of a Carnage. I think this is better, more accurately, a good play on Carnage rather than a bad play on Kick. They're like, hey, Dragon's up, they need the gold, they're gonna go for that, and they just caught them out of position. It took down an easy turret, and once you lose all the turrets in your lanes, that just means that there's that one half of the map you just can't go to. Rocket hitting uh, Carnage's cat there, pretty much only the true damage actually making a difference from that. Altorius actually looked amazingly squishy in that last fight, which I did not expect. He actually, oh my goodness, he has uh, both Heart of Gold for the health, but then the health and armor from Sunfire Cape as well as Frozen Heart. That kid is not dying to Buxom, that's for sure. He actually has uh, Infinity Edge and Phantom Dancers. That's a lot of damage nonetheless. However, with no Last Whisper, that's just not going to be enough to take down Althorius. What's going to kill Althorius is this friggin' Swain down here. DX Alchemist sitting at 410 ability power can pick up his death cap at any moment, but he does have Baron buff, so you don't really want to be going back to base with Baron buff. Needs about 500 or 600 gold uh, left until he can pick that up. We're actually trying to get the catch out on ZH Harmony. Picked him up there, but look at that sap magic. Killed him from 175 just from auto attacking. That is absolutely ridiculous, but what is also ridiculous, look at this ward coverage from Carnage. One, two, three, Four. And then is there one a blue buff? No, there's four wards just in this little tiny section. They're just like, hey, I don't like this thing called Fog of War. I, I, I haven't heard of this. Have you? Uh, I'm just gonna ward everything. And they know literally everything that's happening. They know the positioning on the jungler Thormac. They know Ware just used his ult. So right now Carnage looking to push in here, looking to make a play. They have Baron buff, they have minions. You can see the shielded attempt there from Mitch. This turret is gonna go down. There's nothing that kicking you about. They can try to initiate on this, but Thormac just unable to run in there and get the grab. But what is it? What are his items? What is not allowing him to tank that? He does not have, uh, he's only a 107 versus a 148. There is the initiate. DX Alchemist getting actually burst down pretty low there and dang that is a lot of burst coming out from Rizel. that was pretty much uh, the reason you have an 80 carry because if you can chunk the AP like that oh my goodness they're gonna get the slow there is the counter initiate oh my goodness ZH Harmony going down or not ZH Harmony uh, DX Alchemist getting burst down ZH Harmony will be the next to fall an excellent play by kick you can see just the DPS from Ari sitting in the back doing so much damage Mitch actually sustaining their thanks to the hex stringer forcing Ware to flash out of there bucks up dropping dangerous slow will Altorius be able to pick this up he has so much armor they just cannot kill him the exhaust goes out on Ware they know that he is the person that can make the difference here bucks up goes down to Altorius they just can't kill this guy the magic damage from sunlight could proc enough to get him out of there but no oh my god goodness that guy survived for literally forever he's just like what if i didn't take auto attack damage anymore it's like oh i'm, I'm almost kind of like this oh my goodness mitch going in to make a play onto a uh, Vore. not able to do it janna just there providing so much utility mitch however able to jump on out of there get out alive and man this kid's uh this kid's a little good he uh whoa went last whisper after Aegis of Legion, next level Lee Sin builds here, guys. If you guys uh, ever don't know what to get against uh, Malphite lane that goes triple gold for fives, apparently it's uh, Aegis of the Legion, Hex Shrinker, into Last Whisperer. Definitely an item choice that, uh, that Graves would like right now. Did oh, he has it now. Oh, my goodness. We hit C real fast to check out his armor penetration of 46% uh, with six flats. So that is... I don't even know what to say right now, guys. That, that last fight, you saw... Ah, excuse me. You saw Altorius just completely, fully dominate uh, Buxom. Like, to quote Hotshot GG, he's like, you know, oh, they didn't think he was very good, and then uh, they just uh, play him against him, and they're like, oh, my butthole, and then just get fully dominated. I think that was on Twisted Fate and playing him against World Elite. And, uh, yeah, pretty much the same thing, Malphite versus Graves. You're just not going to kill him, unless you buy that whole thing that gives you 40% armor penetration. So 40% uh, of 270 is a lot of armor that you just don't have. That's pretty much like an item that doesn't exist on Altorius. It's like, oh, I, I heard that you didn't have the frozen heart anymore. And actually it goes up to 365. I'm just not even going to discuss exactly how highly inappropriate that is that a uh, Malphite 
has, uh, I think at 400 armor, you get 86% uh, auto attack uh, damage reduction. So, it's, uh, it's a little good. So, he's not going to take damage from Buxom. He's not going to take damage uh, from uh, Mitch top lane. And uh, that means that pretty much he can go in there and go straight for the AD carries. And that's, that's his job. He's an ult bot. Altorius goes in there, ults the AD carry, takes him down. And uh, he really needs some magic resistance. He's only sitting on 70, so that's going to be DX's job. Uh, Alchemist looking to take that down. Worry uh, gets the snare, forces Ari out of the fight, but Thorback getting into the thick of things. DX Alchemist could actually go down. The Zony is not in time. Uh, ZH Harmony actually forced to get out of there now. Uh, he's going to get jumped on there by Carnage Cat. Will get the sunlight damage off and up to kill him there. Altorius taking all the things. Could go down here. Is he going to be able to sustain? Look at him. He just takes no damage. That is ridiculous. This guy is so tanky. Now Cat being forced to run. Kick Eastward making the comeback of a century. Altorius gets the Janus Shield. ZH Harmony getting flung back into the team. Nobody has any help there, but the least of all is ZH Harmony who will actually heal off a of Magical Sap. Gets the kill off onto Altorius. Oh my goodness, Mazov looking to get the kill, and there is the ace, picked up by Janna. I don't even know how clutch that was. He's like, hey, I don't take damage, what turrets are pretty strong, guys. And uh, that was a play if I have ever seen one. Those gold profiles kicking in the clutch. I don't even know. Look at this Janna build. He, she's going for a friggin' Hextech Revolver. Now, Will of the Ancients. You know, I know it's a support item, but jeepers, that was... Uh, it's a little good. You can just see as she dropped Zephyr there in order to pick up the kill on Maokai. And I was like, you know, Maokai is really tanky, right? He has that Negatron cloak, right? He's going to be able to... And then I realized that, oh, wait, she's building a lot more AP than you see out of your standard supports. Takes him down and picks up the ace for Kick Esports. So it's 14 to 9. Uh, two, two turret advantage... One dragon, one baron advantage for Carnage, and it's still ridiculously close. Only uh, about a 5,000 gold disadvantage there. Let me take a drink real fast. Be right back. Oh my goodness, guys. This game is, like, way too epic. Like, seriously, it's 35 minutes in. 36 now. And uh, this it's too even. And that doesn't even make sense. And then you look at the gold per five count. And you're like, hey, one, two. Are they starting to sell those? Uh, yeah, there's one, two. And then all three gold per five items sold there for Malphite. So... And he's like, hey, I got a pretty good build. This is going to sustain me. This is what I needed to get. And so he's happy with where he is. He has one more item slot. Might go for Thorn Mail. Probably a good idea, though, to go for something like an Abyssal Scepter. Just because he's getting melted there by the AP damage uh, from uh, DX Alchemist. I think I've been saying ZH Harmony this whole time when, I'm, when it's actually ZA Harmony. But the H is just there. You can't let it be silent. Okay, so 85 AP on Malphite. Is that all coming from DFG? Yeah, because he's burned Ignite and he had that one point spec in the offense tree. So he actually went 2109. Or 21 or 9210, I guess. Unless he went something wacky like 21 or 22 23 in defense and then uh, summon offense and utility. I've seen like a lot of Nasuses do that, but unless you're Navi, you really don't play Nasus. There's a attempted initiate by Mitch. The all goes down, crocking sunlight at everybody, but not getting a kill. A cat cannot chase a Ware in there anymore. Ware getting in, getting out, getting almost taken down, but the ult, that AP on Malzum, just doing so much work. Rizal getting burst down there, and that was a really good team fight. Went 3-4-1, almost to a ZH Harmony, getting out of there alive, just thanks to that magic sap, or sap magic, rather. This guy, he loves his sap, right? So I think that's something we can all really get behind. Shield actually taking, like, three auto attacks there from Graves. Uh, already you can see Carnage tanking that just because he can heal off of those minions. Really good uh, tank choice. Now the tanking goes on to Buxom. Bust them, not really what you want to do. Definitely want to reserve the bustums for his moves, which apparently he has like Jagger because this guy is doing work. If we check out his items, he has all three AD carry items plus the Berserker Greaves. So this guy has 277, almost 300 AD with, I think that's actually a 1.8 attack speed when you get the 80% increase uh, from Quick Draw. Yeah. You're gonna see one more dragon actually, so uh, two dragons up now after this uh, for for Carnage. They definitely love their dragon plays, and Mazum gonna go out and clear out wards. He's not able to be made to have a play be made on him. Just gonna get one, get two, and really all those wards that I was commenting on earlier around this general uh, top lower jungle area. Top lower jungle. It's the lower half of the map, and then also the upper quarter of, of the blue. S all right, you guys get what I'm saying. There used to be wards there, there aren't anymore, and that's because Jan is a boss. 
TLDR. Uh, Mazam still has double gold for fives and a Will of the Ancients rocking 91 ability power. Where that other... Did he like accidentally put AP runes in? I don't know, but uh, regardless, he has that 11 AP from somewhere and that's uh, it's pretty effective. You can already see the Zephyr's really strong. Uh, shields are probably make the biggest difference. If we can check out exactly how much uh, damage those shields actually do, it's going to be 240 plus 20. That's 320 damage you just don't take. Plus, oh wait, 50 AD. So uh, pretty much what's going to happen is Rizel is going to get jumped on by Malphite, or not by Malphite, by uh, Lee Sin. And uh, ZH Harmony is going to jump in there as well. And so he's going to take a shield, he's going to Valkyrie out, and uh, probably pop Cleanse. Though Cleanse is actually down for another minute, and uh, that actually could be really big because you have so much CC uh, between uh, the Leona, between uh, Carnage's uh, DX Alchemist, and there is the CC dropped onto a raid. The ult goes off, but Bustum getting busted up himself. The Ignite takes down the kill. Uh, Altoria is getting that one. Amazum resets the fight a little bit, but uh, Thormac in there just not taking damage at all. Uh, Altoria's got got bursted down that is a horrible choice because that means that all the damage that you could have put on everything else got wasted on the tank Thormac just sustaining through everything is so much damage but now cannot deal it thanks to that Maokai ult and now we're ready the last person left alive try to get the damage from the pullback in not able to pick up the uh, any kill that is the ace and uh, Thormac MVP that fight but just was not enough could not carry Althorius they're just like hey this guy has 70 AP he popped literally everything that he could got bursted down thanks to this guy you see there's no mana bar right there that mana bar was Althorius's health bar and he just said hey I got this void staff and I also have 629 AP you're gonna need a little bit more than uh, 69 MR to, to take care of me and this could actually be the game one inhibitor down second inhibitor just now being taken by carnage you can see the ult there from Maokai looking to clear out those minions as fast as possible uh, they're gonna make the smart decision uh, it's kind of like Artosis says if you follow Starcraft once you're ahead you get more ahead and that's exactly what uh, carnage needs to do they're gonna back out of there push in they have minions on the Nexus turrets even DPS in them right now with a super minion he's apparently just standing still for some odd reason I'm not sure exactly what that was oh yeah you got the attack speed slow so he's literally just sitting there for a million years that's the the power of the attack speed slow on Malphite what is that actually at right now it's 50% attack speed slow it's just ridiculous it's like, it's like instead of having two attack speed you have one attack speed it's just ridiculous I say that word a lot and that's kind of a kind of an accurate situation because uh, Buxom sitting at 1.6 that definitely goes over two once he uses uh, quick draw so uh, excuse me water break and we're back and by back I mean it's 16 to 27 11 kill advantage and now even with those gold provides, those cannot make up for the barons, the dragons, and the, uh, oh wait, tons and tons of, well, damage and kills. I have to make sure to say that at least one time for cast, just to make free cavity. So ZH Harmony has a, uh, Banshee's Veil now. He's not gonna get taunted. That was actually what, uh, almost killed in that last fight. He, uh, jumped in on Ari, got taunted immediately, paralyzed instantly. Excellent ward over the wall. This is the Team Dynamic spot. This is where, if you guys are familiar with the North American teams, Team Dynamic perpetually forced pl fourth place. They win by standing in this spot. You go over there, and oh my goodness, there is the ult. Althora is doing work. There is instantaneous almost jib on Mitch. He's actually half health. Cat is in the danger zone. ZH Harmony get taking a lot of damage. Althora is forced to get out of there. ZH Harmony looking to make the play on that, but actually forced to turn onto Rizel. Oh my goodness, a jump all the way over there with the Zenith Blade. ZH Harmony could go down here. Rizel, however, going down as well. Wure looks to turn around and make a play on Carnage Cat. A flash over the never move. No mana, and this is, oh my goodness, he has blue buff, but he's not going to be able to use it. He pops the Ar the Guardian Angel there on Mitch, actually, and with Carnage Cat coming up, the mana regen here is so strong for Ari. Could kill Carnage's cat if uh, they, they aren't careful, but Carnage is just going to turn around, walk straight into the base. It's three on, well, actually, one, two, three, four. Look at these health bars for Carnage. This actually could be something that uh, that makes them pay. They have very limited health. In fact, like, Janna could take out Buxom right now. That's just how strong 91 AP on Janna is, but instead forced to turn around to DX, loses a lot of health, gets caught by the stun, and gets completely destroyed. DX Alchemist is doing a lot of worse. Carnage just cat jumps in there. One of the guys drops the, C, uh, the uh, CC combo, but Waray turning around says, Sub son, I got some damages, and uh, bust him all over Carnage's DX Alchemist. He's gonna go down, but they do have Buxom and Mitch onto the Nexus turret. So many super minions in there. He's gonna take everything Thormac can do. Force to pop his ultimate ability. Does he actually have uh, anything else to clear that AoE? He's popping the Shirelias as well. Runs out of there, but does, oh my goodness, just says peace. I'm out.
Thormak uh, takes a lot of uh, damage, actually. Half health already, just from Super Minions and that Lee Sin kick, so ugh, that's just how strong Super Minions pushing in on your Nexus are. They even got some damage off onto it. Uh, it's actually fully regen. But no turrets left in the game. Three inhibitors down all the ways. All the minions pushing in onto uh, Kick Esports' base. And it's not looking good for our heroes. The Skull Provides kept them in the game so well. But eventually you have to come up with items. And uh, ugh, it looks like a Zanyas is going to be the next pick. Zanyas, if you're from the uh, northeast part of the United States. And uh, it gets you, gives you armor, gives you AP. Both things that Malphite needs. So really smart pickup. Would have liked to see something else uh, along the lines of an Abyssal Scepter just to make his attacks even stronger. But when you have that Abyssal on R, you kind of get the same benefit out of that. Ari not doing too badly. Sitting at 557. Going for double Woda, even though they have a top lane Malphite. So that's actually a really key uh, key thing to observe because you have 35% spell ban plus another 40. It's going to be 75, which is uh, a, a high number in case you guys were, uh, were looking for some expert analysis on that situation. Uh, speaking of expert analysis, that was, that was Baron Nasher. He just died. Uh, that gives you a buff and makes you strong. I'll stop being an idiot. So, speaking of idiots... No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I get myself into so much trouble. Carnage pushing in for what could be the last push of the game. It is 4v5 because DX Alchemist did go back. So they're like, hey, man, yeah, you need to step it up. Yo, get up uh, get up here on our level. Uh, mid inhibitor could respawn pretty soon. Or actually, an inhibitor. So... They realize, or Carnage realizes, Kick is at a disadvantage. They're like, hey, they, we have super minions in our base. <laughs> they're picking it. They're like, holy WTF, what are you doing? And this guy needs to catch up just a little bit. Like, oh my goodness, you're so slow. And then he just stops moving. He's like, chill out, guys. I got this. <laughs> He's literally just stopping. What a troll. Holy crap. <laughs> Oh my goodness, so yeah, DX Harvey having a little bit of fun at the end of the game. It's 18 to 31, 76 to 64, thousand gold respectively. And Buxom actually getting a little bit CC'd there. Sometimes you, you don't see the knockup animation. There's Estrellas, this will be the last push of the game. Inhibitor gets dropped once again. There is no minion wave without super creeps. Gonna jump in there, Thormac makes the initiate, not something you wanna do. The all is down, only hits Zara. There's the ult in by Althorius. Does not have Zonya's complete, so he just dies instantaneously. A Thormac, however, gets broken by uh, Buxom. This kid has almost 400 AD. The Nexus in jeopardy. GG well played, coming out from both teams, and that is the game. Congratulations to Carnage Esports. I don't know if this is game two or if this is a, just a best of three or best of one. If they won, then congratulations. If not, see you guys later for the next uh, game. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching. Peace out.